Okay. So uh, today we are going to discuss. Uh, we are we are going to continue. Actually, we are going to continue. Uh, you need to uh, rest of the part. So we were discussing up to uh, devices. So we'll continue from uh, that. Where did we stop? Dean, can you tell me which page? I didn't get you. What's the page number? Up to one page again, you were Monitors, uh, this this part we discussed fifteen. Storage. Then where where did we stop? Storage devices. Ah, from storage device we have to start now. Yeah. Okay, this uh, storage devices means the devices that we can. Uh, used to store data. It can be either uh, permanent storage or temporary storage. Right? Uh, okay. Shall we uh, wait another five minutes to, uh, I think uh, there are more people to Come, we'll we'll see another around five minutes that they are joining. Okay, we'll start uh, storage devices. Write down here <coughs> six internal. Magnetic hard disk under that write down. Hard disk is the data storage device. Hard disk is data storage device that uses that uses magnetic storage to magnetic storage to Store and retrieve, store and retrieve digital information, digital information using one or more, using one or more. In rotating disk, in rotating disk, coated with some magnetic materials, coated with some magnetic materials. Then external hard disk is given. An external hard drive is a po uh, portable storage device uh, that can be attached to computer through a USB port. Uh, then write down under magnetic tape. Write down under magnetic tape. Magnetic tape is. Magnetic tape is 
one of the oldest technologies one of the oldest technologies for electronic data storage for electronic data storage on a magnetic surface on a magnetic surface tape has largely been tape has largely been displaced as displaced as as a displayed as a primary and backup storage medium primary and backup storage medium now this uh, magnetic tapes we are using for uh, backup storage in banks and all that you can see this right a storage medium but it will it remains well suited but it remains well suited for archiving for archiving because of its high capacity because of its high capacity low cost and long durability high capacity low cost and long durability it is a sequential recording system sequential means one after another it is a sequential recording system that is not good for random access that is not good for random access then we'll go to uh, optical disc optical disc under that write down an optical disc is an electronic data storage medium an optical disc is an electronic data storage medium that can be written to that can be written to and read using a read using a low powered laser beam low powered laser beam optical uh, disc uh, now you can see these are some uh, type cd dvds uh, uh, blu rays this uh, cd uh, read rom is there cd uh, rw read write is there dvd also there read write means you can read and write several times this is a uh, read only there then uh, blu ray discs nowadays we are using them for like storing uh, movies and all that high definition movies and all that uh, okay then uh, dvd ram 
if you ram is likely ordinary random access memory it can be repeatedly read and written written to and erased if you ram this can be re re read 100 times more than dvd write now dvd rw dvd read write also you can read write again and again but dvd ram the difference is dvd ram you can re read written that means read and write 100 times more than dvd read write now suppose if, if dvd read write can be read write only 100 times then uh, the dvd ram become 200 times you can do the same thing so that is the difference Then flash drives are there, memory card, flash drives means pen drives. Then memory cards are there, memory cards we are using them for uh, mobile phones and all that. These memory cards we can use them. Then we'll go to parallel computing. Now in parallel computing, I'll explain a bit. Right. Uh, in parallel computing, in parallel computing, what is happening now? Suppose there are there's a task, right? There's a task. I take uh, five minutes. Is taking to complete this task, right? Now in the parallel computing, what is happening? This task is divided to five parts as example eh? as example i'm taking part one part two part three part four part five so in uh, parallel company this uh, task five minutes task is divided to five parts now each part can be uh, processed or can be done within one minute so each part can be done in one minute now, if you are doing these five parts at the same time, simultaneously, it is taking only one minute to do one task. That means all five tasks can be completed within one minute because they are doing simultaneously at the same time. If you are doing task, you can do 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 task, within one minute, you can finish this five minute task. Minute you can finish that within one minute if you are using parallel computing. So that is the uh, basic concept of the parallel computing. Okay, we'll write down under that. Parallel computing is a Parallel computing is a uh, here right now. Parallel computing is a uh, type of computation. Type of computation. Type of computation in which many programs or processors in which Many programs or processors are done simultaneously. Are done simultaneously. Large problems can often be large problems can often be. Divided into smaller ones, divided into smaller ones, which can then be solved, which can then be solved. At the same time. At the same time,
Give me a second. I'll get back to you. Give me a second. Uh, so all at the same time, in simple terms, in simple terms, in simple terms, parallel computing is, parallel computing is, breaking up a task, breaking up a task, into smaller pieces into smaller pieces and executing those pieces into smaller pieces and executing those pieces and executing those pieces at the same time at the same time each on their own processor at the same time each on their own processor or on a set of or on a set of computers set of computers that have been networked together that have been networked together then we'll go to a uh, grid computing grid computing also same kind of thing but distributing architecture now as example processing processing power in a uh, several computers processing power are combining together and working or combining uh, storage power storage uh, capacity of several programs together so that is called grid computing now in parallel computing one task is divided into several tasks but in grid computing means you are connecting uh, the, the, uh, this uh, that is called distributing architecture that is connecting some computers together to um, share the processing power or the storage capability right under grid computer write down Grid computing is a distributed architecture Grid computing is a distributed architecture of large numbers of computers of large numbers of computers connected to solve a connected to solve a complex problem complex problem in the grid computing model in the grid computing model servers or personal computers servers or personal computers run independent tasks run independent tasks
and are loosely linked by the and are loosely linked by the internet or internet or low speed networks low speed networks computers may connect computers may connect directly or directly or via scheduling systems Why scheduling system in grid computing in grid computing interconnected computer systems interconnected computer systems utilize the same resources utilize the same resources collectively collectively grid computing usually consists of grid computing usually consists of one main computer one main computer one main computer that distribute information and distribute information and task to a group of network computers distributed information and task to a group of to a group of net uh, to a group of network computers network computers to accomplish a common goal to accomplish a common goal okay in grid computing 
that's how it's uh, working. Then we'll go to a uh, more Newman architecture. This is the architecture that uh, nowadays computers are also even uh, they are also using this uh, architecture. So this is called von Neumann architecture. You can see that input devices are there, output devices are there, then central processing unit. Under central processing unit, you get control unit and arithmetic unit. Then there's another unit called memory unit. So this is called von Neumann architecture. Uh, we'll write down under that. Von Neumann architecture consists of Von Neumann architecture consists of consists of a CPU CPU memory and input output devices input output devices the program is stored in the the program is stored in the memory The CPU fetch, fetch means it's like take it, fetch. The CPU fetch an instruction from the memory. An instruction from the memory. at a time at a time and executes it and executes it So major components of architecture, you can see central opportunity is there, control unit also there. Uh, this, this is a unit control signal of all devices of a computer system. Now come with the control, system, control unit, only that computer can be controlled, right? So there you are. So you have inside the central processing unit, you have control unit, then you have something called arithmetic and logic unit. All these, uh, uh, what I call, uh, all these, uh, mathematical calculations are done by using the uh, ALU arithmetic and logic unit that is uh, like uh, addition subtraction division then uh, comparison all these stuffs are doing by the arithmetic and logic unit then you have memory register so memory register is the kind of a small um, memory that can hold information information related to arithmetic and logic unit uh, in, uh, cpu register is one of a small set of data holding places which is part of the computer processor a register may hold an instruction a storage address or any kind of data so it is uh, holding small part of or small uh, amount of data which is needed to ALU and all then you have something called memory. Memory can be either primary or secondary memory. So primary memory means the memory that is uh, necessary 
to run a computer if you take ram and other we will be discussing it later in this uh, chapter same chapter secondary memory means uh, that is a permanent memory actually permanent memory that can hold data for long time even the power goes nothing will happen what is inside this secondary memory so we will be discussing them uh, separately then you have input devices and output devices that we have already discussed input devices means the devices that we can use to input data to the computer output devices means the uh, taking out or displaying the output through the output devices or you can take hard copy see then there is something called data bus now data bus now usual bus you can travel from one place to another so same thing is happening with this bus data bus means it's traveling the data taking data from one place to another control bus means control signals so all these stuffs are going so these are the buses under data bus right down now i think you have seen if you have uh, removed a computer that's the motherboard and all the last last week i sh show you that showed you uh, motherboard they are uh, some uh, parts where they are like uh, buses but I mean kind of a cables so data buses most of the time data buses can be seen with white color that's the part of the cable hard disk again down cd rom now if suppose you are copying something from the cd to hard disk so the data bus should be there in the cable yeah plug color the you through that only what is inside the cd can be copied to the hard disk okay you know that's called database under that right now a data bus is a system data bus is a system within a computer or within a computer or device device consisting of a consisting of a connector or connector or set of wires set of wires that provides that provides transportation for data transportation for data so data transportation of data can be done with the database then we we'll go through the control bus control bus is used to transmit variety of control signals to com components and devices now as example you want to shut down the computer so that signal should be traveled from one place to another as example from the control unit to power unit so that kind of things are control that is through the control bus that kind of signals are traveling then we'll go to the next part. Fetch execute cycle. Now fetch execute means in the processor. Inside the processor, you are fetching an instruction and decoding. Decoding means now encoded and decoded. Encoded and decoded. Uh, it is uh, decoding means it is uh, converted to readable format as example uh, if i tell something like this right. 
for the control unit, you are getting a instruction. Say uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. 1 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 right so these are the instructions so this is encode encode means this is uh, we can't actually we can't understand this stuff but computer control should be able to understand these things so with the control unit it is decoding the instruction decode decoding means now as example this is for shutdown I am taking just example. This is not the real code. I am just taking the example, right? Shut down. A uh, close program. This is for uh, restart, right? So uh, encoded uh, instruction should be decoded. Uh, should be decoded by the control unit, right? This is not the real, real uh, instruction. I am just taking to uh, make you sense of this, right? So control unit decoding instruction. After decoding, ah, okay. This is shut down. Then that control unit will be giving the instruction to the relevant uh, device. Okay, shut down the computer, close this program like that. So this is called decoding. So encoding and decoding should be done. Decoding uh, is uh, doing by the control unit. So uh, this is called fetch, fetch decoding. The fetch decode, fetching means you are taking the instruction, then decoding, then executing. All right here, execute, right? Execute. That means fetching one instruction at a time, one instruction at a time, taking one instruction, then decoding, then execute. Whatever the instruction will be executed, then. Fetch in the next instruction like that. This is called, this is kind of a uh, circle, like this is going repeated. So, this is called fetch decode execute cycle. Fetch decode execute cycle or fetch execute cycle. So, we will go through that one. Fetch execute cycle. Now, you can see fetch an instruction from. So it is uh, uh, fetching an instruction from the memory actually, then decoding it. So what I uh, told you that is decoding, then executing, then again fetching the next instruction. So this is called fetch execute cycle. Now if I uh, go in detail for that, so what is happening? This is the step one, fetching the instruction. Then uh, second step, decoding. Third step, executing. Then fourth step, store resulting memory. Sometimes after executing, you want to keep those information in your computer, in the memory. So that is also can be happen in this cycle. So here, this control unit is done by the decoding part. Executing part is done by the ALU, arithmetic and logic unit. Fetching instruction and storing both are happening inside the main memory. Inside the main memory. Right? Okay, then we we'll go to the multi core processor. Multi core means there are several cores, that means several processors inside one processor. This is i3, i5, i7. These are all, are, all are multi core processors. Right? Under that, write down. Under this multi core processor, write down. Multi core processor is a single computing component. Single computing component with two or more independent with two or more independent two or more independent actual processing units actual processing unit within bracket put course c o r e s course 
which are units which are units that read and execute program instructions that read and execute program instructions program instructions therefore therefore the single processor can run the single processor can run multiple instruction multiple instruction on separate cores on separate cores at the same time separate cores at the same time need of multi core processors are that means why why we need multi core processors need of multi core processor are in point form write down in point form write down first point can be run a program can be run a program by dividing some parts by dividing some parts so it gets executed fast so it get executed fast second point it enables it enables parallel programming it enables parallel programming it enables parallel programming another point third point to get the high performance from a to get the high performance on the from from a to get the high performance from a single machine single machine single machine okay <coughs> we'll go to uh, memory hierarchy now this memory management part earlier in earlier syllabus you had a separate uh, unit for this memory management but uh, uh, with the new syllabus from 2019 you have this memory management part in the second unit it is embedded in the second unit so uh, we we'll go through that so when we take memory hierarchy you can see increasing speed and cost per bit that means now when you take uh, register memory compared to the cd so what will happen uh, cd you can buy like uh, around 50 rupees you have around 600 megabyte but registers you can't buy around 2 mb 4 mb registers even its cost it's uh, difficult to uh, it's not uh, possible to um, change them but it will cost more than that 
usually RAM even, you know, that 4 GB RAM, it, it is more than like uh, 1000 rupees. So you can understand when you take optical disk or CD, you can see uh, 600 MB megabyte can be taken by the around by, by using rupees, uh, 50 rupees, but for, for this DB, then yeah, when you divide it to a megabyte, it's around uh, 4,000 something. It is cost than the normal, uh, when you take the bit, one bit, so you know how to convert it to bit, uh, megabyte or whatever you have to multiply. I think uh, you can remember those stuff, one, one bit, uh, eight bit is one byte, 1024 bytes equal one kilobyte, 1024 kilobyte equal one megabyte like that goes. So when you compare all this stuff, you can see cost per bit is uh, uh, increasing when you go up in this uh, chart. That means registers have the uh, costly, that is it. it, has the highest cost per bit in this memory hierarchy. When you are coming down, increasing the size, Size of the capacity will be increasing when you are coming down. That means registers, more than registers you have in cache memory. In cache memory, more than cache memory, you have main memory, that's RAM and all the solid state. So they are increasing the size as well as the capacity. Then uh, in, uh, now this, this way, you can put another arrow. In, it increased the speed also. Write down somewhere when you are going to register as the highest speed. Speed is increasing when it is going up. I have not mentioned it. Uh, put that also. Speed. Also, you can take when it is going up. Speed is becoming high. That means register has more speed. More speed. So more speed means. Access time, what will happen? Access time, what will happen? Access time will be reducing. Access time will be reducing. Reducing or decreasing, we'll put decreasing. Access time. Now speed, uh, increasing speed, increasing speed and decreasing access time. So speed, high speed means access time is less. Now as example, you have to run 100 meters. So uh, if you run, can run fast, that means your time will be decreased. So you can go within 10 seconds. If a speed is low, you can, you may can take 20 seconds, right? So they are, when your speed is high, increasing the speed, you are decreasing the access time. Uh, so uh, put those two also there. I'm going to put them. Take them down also. Speed is increasing, decreasing the access time when you're going up. So this is called memory hierarchy. You have to uh, remember this stuff. So yeah, MCQ questions, you will be getting this type of Questions? Then we'll go to the volatile memory. So volatile means what will happen? Volatile memory is a computer storage that only holds the data while the device is powered. Registers, cache memories and RAM. So as an example, uh, now you, you are watching a movie. So whatever you are working, working programs will be loaded to RAM. Uh, suddenly power goes. So what will happen? You have to restart the over. When the power comes, you have to start the computer again. And you have to start that program or movie from the beginning. From the beginning. So that means what is happening. When the computer switch off, your data inside the registers, cache memories and RAM, will be vanished, right? So will be lost. So that's why it's called volatile memory. 
so when you take a volatile memory cache memory is uh, uh, one of that right uh, cache memory is one of that cache memory uh, is used to store program and instruction that are frequently accessible to software during operation now processor need to get some data but it is difficult to take from the ram uh, i will show you registers and cache memories uh, both are like uh, whether now suppose you have processor here cpu right so you have ram here can read and write from the ram doesn't matter right but when you're comparing it is taking more time to take data from RAM, right? So what is happening in between? In between, you have something called cache memory, right? So it is taking data and giving also, and CPU is taking data from and giving from the cache. So what is happening uh, without taking from the RAM? It is easy and it is fast taking data from the cache memory or the it can be the registers. So this cache memory can be level one, level two, and level three. So level one cache memory within the CPU. Within the CPU, you can have this level one. Level two even can be within the CPU. That's very easy, no? Taking data very fast from the level one cache. Then level two can be there, level three also can be there. Most of the time they are in the motherboard. That day we, um, I uh, show you a motherboard, it's not close by. So uh, anyway, right? So it is, uh, it is taking more time than taking from the RAM. So it is uh, easy to take data from the cache memory without taking to RAM. So cache also you can have level one, level two, and all this stuff. So level one is the fastest than level two. Level two is fastest than level three. So, but when you are comparing the capacity of the cache memory, so uh, if a level one cache memory has small memory, level two bit more than that, level three more than that. But it is usually in megabytes. You can see them in megabytes when you are buying a computer. There, uh, in the specification, they are telling okay, cache memory this much of cache memory is there. So if you can buy a computer with more cache memory, that means your speed is uh, big. Cache memory ka value of the cache memory value, cache memory size ka value na, api speed ka computer value na because you can keep more data inside the cache. So what a processor ka dala data ka na lazy ve na. So api ek baalam. So type of cache memories level one cache is extremely fast but relatively small. Relatively small. And usually embedded in the processor chip. That's what I told. In the CPU itself, you can have level one cache. Level one cache memory. Level two cache is often more capacity than level one. It may be located on the CPU or on the separate. Can be inside the CPU, or it can be separate, but level one definitely inside the CPU processor, but level two either inside the CPU or separate. Level three cache is a typically is a specialized memory that works to improve the performance of level and level two when you have level three cache memory you it can improve the performance of level one and level two it can be significantly slower than level one and level two but it is usually double the speed of ram so ram ram make a speed mm -hmm. double color you know if it is uh, level three cache memory got you know speed the guy double color and size second away don't misunderstand that if you have 2 gb ram 4 gb ram 8 gb ram that's there same same size is there 
මෙයා කරන්නේ ස්පීඩ් එක ඩබල් ද ස්පීඩ් අර ඩේට ට්‍රාන්ස්ෆර් ස්පීඩ් එක ඩබල් කරනවා when you have the level 3 cache memory then we'll go to uh, continue we'll continue uh, random access memory ram ram is the main memory of the computer i will uh, explain ram also So RAM like this, right? So RAM memory is there in each computer. You have to have RAM. So RAM you can't use. It's a computer. So when you switch on the computer, when you switch on the computer, it will automatically load operating system. Okay, operating system again. I will Windows see now. I need Windows seven, eight, ten. A Linux scale operating system, you know, Apple, Apple, Mac operating, whatever, whatever the operating system, the Android operating system, even the mobile phone, even. that will be loaded to the RAM at the very first time. Yeah, pulling my load, you know, I keep what that does, yeah, RAM is gonna load. Then, whatever the program you are opening, why open Karaka as a word, they got RAM is gonna die. Why open Karaka as a Excel? अनिवार्योग्रामीण but like a virtual memory killer part they would you know don't worry about that at the moment so i'm trying to run there's a one reason to get the computer stuck computer up again is stuck you know get the model is stuck you know put care of an america a reason they can make a hat make an away some pool name of other one the one reason you can take loading more programs than the ram capacity up a ram capacity of 4 gb i'm trying to know 5 gb 6 gb programs good up make it a load crap so i'm going to win it This computer will get this stuck. That's why no one will be able to use it. That's one reason. That's the reason they got some money. Computer is stuck. So you can have more capacity. Four GB, I mean, there are eight GB program. Right? Then you can load more program. Right? Have I done? Well, I can't do that. No, it's hard. Maybe get the computer. See, you know, four GB. Maybe I can sixteen GB. Maybe I can do that. No, it's hard. Maybe computer is fast. No, I mean, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. No, it's hard. पहला वो वाला रैम रैम कार्ड यू कैन में टेक सेपरेटली आर गे ना प्लग कर गानो कंप्यूटर मदरबोर्ड एकर गा गानो देयर आर सम स्लॉट्स सी राइट सो विल इट इफेक्ट एक्सेल में मेक इफेक्ट पे नेक्स्ट सा देन आफ्टर दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग सम मेमोरी मैनेजमेंट कैलकुलेशन एक तो मैं पूरी कैलकुलेशन पार्ट है तीन में पार्ट में छोटा हमारो पार्ट है तीन अदर थिंग्स आर थियरी दैट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड सो ये तो कोड आप खाता करनवा अभी तो तीन में के एड्रेस बस के लेगा address එක. එතකොට address එකේ size එකයි මේකෙන් කොච්චර වැඩි කරත් වැඩක් නැහැ කියලා කතාව මම කියලා දෙනවා when you are discussing about uh, memory addressing those system right so uh, at the moment i want to, i want to do today i want to tell that if you load more programs this get stuck because you have limited ram but if you increase the ram even it won't affect sometimes if your address bus cannot access that uh, large number of friends right or oh, la large capacity so it should be compatible compatible with no need of key so uh, ram you can take uh, something like that uh, so uh, currently working programs all the currently working programs will be loaded to the ram so even you are knowledge or without your knowledge Operating system will be the first program loaded to the RAM. Yeah, it was that. Yeah, any bar in the RAM because the RAM is not available. Now, when we get in, how many programs? I am as I told. When the power goes, we get in. How many can actually lie? We get a map given called volatile memory key. Right? Now we will go to the cute. So uh, RAM is main memory of the computer that hold data for running application and required for required data for computer. Types of RAM are there: SRAM, you know, static RAM, 
SRAM means random access memory uh, that retains database sits in memory as long as power is being supplied. SRAM is used for cache memory and register memory. So SRAM can have power chicken now. Cache memory registers memory hadana SRAM can static RAM can part of time power chicken. DRAM can a dynamic RAM up a normal RAM mega. This type of RAM is continuous refresh or it will lose it content. It can up again refresh current no refresh current no again. Power eka can be them the other thing no then only it remains the data otherwise it will lose. It is taken at Villa and a pull. I mean, they come a current taken at Duna, that you know. Make a refresh on that and go what change, you know, it's a refreshing killer. I could part of what I can know in the DRAM dynamic. Then SDRAM nowadays we can see this SDRAM SD RAM up here or DDR one, two, three, then four. Can you know, uh, synchronized DRAM? Uh, it is the type of uh, memory that synchronizes itself with the computer system clock. According to the system clock, we have a system clock in our computer. Uh, they are giving pulses one zero according to that it is work so these are the types of RAM. then we'll go to the non-volatile memory non-volatile means even the power goes nothing will happen here uh, we'll move to uh, non-volatile memory So uh, this is a type of computer memory that has the capacity capability to hold save data even if the power is turned off. Power ka gear make it in a data taken at even nagilai make it from hard disk okay they will as example you can take. So ROM can read only memory, ROM retains content even when the computer is turned off from stores essential programs such as program that boots the computer up the you know, boot when you are switching on means the uh, computer becoming. Uh, we are telling computer is booting. Uh, so that means for the booting purposes, we have all this program stored inside the ROM. So the api current ka gya kela data lost when na him lost no him next time we can't boot the compute. Right. So uh, for the booting process we have. ROM inside the ROM we have the all these uh, programs. So uh, current other than that hard disk that you know neither. hard disk computer on with the natural and current can be damaged um, frequently current but it's there right. So there are types of ROM uh, P ROM programmer ROM under that write down. It is a memory chip It is a memory chip It is a memory chip on which data can be written only once on which data can be written only once Once a program has been written, once a program has been written onto a PROM, onto a PROM,
into zero. It remains the it remains forever. It remains forever. Can go to a uh, EP ROM. EP ROM. That is called erasable programmable read-only memory. Erasable, that means you can erase and program. Then I write down. EP ROM is a special type of memory. EP ROM is a special type of memory. That retains its contents. That retains its contents. Until it is exposed to. Until it is exposed to. Ultraviolet light, UV light, ultraviolet light. Make it over the scan, ultraviolet light, UV light. The ultraviolet light clears. The ultraviolet light clears. Its contents, its contents making it possible to making it possible to Possible to reprogram the memory. Reprogram the memory. Reprogram the memory. So here EEP ROM is the EEP ROM means electrically erasable. Now that means erasing part is done by the uh, by using electrical charges. So you can see it can be erased by exposing it to an electrical charge. Electrical charge. Then we'll uh, move to a secondary storage type. Magnetic storage devices are there. So in magnetic storage. Uh, is the manipulation of magnetic field. We are using magnetic fields on a medium in order to record audio, video, or other data. It means uh, computer storage mechanism have generally involved a spine in disk or plate and read-write heads. Read-write heads are there on the armature. That's kind of arm. Many type of magnetic storage involve a tape medium either on a real or in a cassette that is in uh, moved by read and write heads are these properties magnetic tapes are uh, you can those are the magnetic storage devices nowadays nowadays you can't see floppy disk magnetic disk is uh, even this hard disk are uh, becoming uh, hard disk are becoming uh, static ones so no more magnetic storage will be like coming in the uh, future. So all these are uh, becoming uh, what's called uh, static storage. 
then the optical storage is there optical storage is any storage method in which data is written uh, and read with a laser for archival or backup purposes typical data is written to optical media such as cds and dvd for several years uh, proponent have spoken of optical storage as a near future replacement of both hard drives optical even can be replaced with these hard drives in a personal computer and uh, tape backup in mass storage optical media is more durable than tape and less vulnerable to environmental condition on the other hand it tends to slower than typical hard drive speed and to offer lower storage capacity so cds dvds blu ray discs can be taken as optical storage then we'll go to the solid state storage solid state Uh, under solid state, uh, we we'll write down solid state storage. Solid state storage that is called with the bucket you can put sss table s sss three s's uh, is a type of computer storage media is a type of computer storage media made from silicon microchips made from silicon microchips This stores data electronically. This stores data electronically. Instead of magnet magnetically. Instead of magnetically. As is finding hard disk drives. As is fine in hard disk drives. Within bracket, you can put HDD. HDD means hard disk drives. Or magnetic oxide tape. Solid state storage can be found. Solid state storage can be found <clears throat> in three forms. In three forms, solid state drives. Within bracket, you can put SSD. Solid state drives. Come on. Solid state cards. Within back, I put SSC. Solid state cards. And solid state modules. 
and solid state modules ssm so these are the three forms solid state drive ssd solid state card ssc solid state modules ssm so common one is ssd you know you all know that ssd cards are there in uh, mobile phones you can find them an important advantage of an important advantage of solid state storage solid state storage is that it contains is that it contains no mechanical parts it contains no mechanical parts and allowing data transfer to an allowing data transfer to an from storage from storage media to media to take place at a take place at a much higher speed much higher speed much higher speed so put examples flash drive flash drive means uh, pen drives pen drives uh, flash drive then uh, memory cards memory cards Right. Okay, we'll go to memory access method. There are two types. Sequential access is start at the beginning and read through order. That means now I'll show you the sequential access. Actually, what is happening? Now your data is something like this. You have data something like one, two, three, four, like that. You have the data. In magnetic tapes and uh, uh, puppy DC, you can find kind of this method. So, here your data is going one after another, accessing one after another from one to two, then again. So, you can't access the third data without accessing the second data. So, this is called sequential method. Sequential method, your data access. One after another, if you take tape now, earlier you had something called cassette piece. Cassette piece, so when you are using these things, you, you can't uh, uh, listen to the music, you can't listen to the music without passing the previous one, without passing the previous one, or you have to go one after another, one after another, you have to uh, bypass them. You can't. You can't uh, jump to the correct one. Wait, take this down, take this down uh, in that uh, space.
then uh, check the tute random access individual address identify directly and access the data immediately that means you can put an example cd cd and dv put the example cd and dvd in random error you can jump from here okay then then this one again from here to this one like that coming so in cd when you are listening to music you can jump to any song you wish to listen right so this is called random method uh, you can take it down there in space take this down Okay. Okay, uh, memory addressing. So this is a calculation part. It's not uh, included in the tool. So you can uh, take your notebooks and uh, take this down. This is a small calculation part. Uh, when you go through the past papers, you can find this kind of questions are there. Okay. So in memory addressing, now address can be given by using bits. Now I think. Uh, you can't remember this stuff i'll write down here bit is the smallest unit bit is the smallest unit in uh, capacity measurement so it bits equal to one byte now you can write this part in in still somewhere in uh, when you have some spaces you can write it somewhere eight bits is equal one byte thousand twenty four bytes equal one kilobyte kb kilobyte right then 1024 kb one megabyte 1024 megabyte one gigabyte 1024 gigabyte one terabyte so at the moment we are working up to terabyte hard disks are there in one, ter one terabyte two terabytes hard disks are there so there are some more terabyte petabyte there like that uh, there are so many but we are discussing up to this one uh, to understand this uh, memory addressing memory management part you should know this stuff so you can put another thing four bits equal one nimble It's also there. So bit is the smallest unit. 
So four bits equal one nibble. That means uh, eight bits equal one byte. Means four uh, two nibble means uh, one byte. You can take take this down somewhere in the tube. In the last page, even you have some spaces there. You can take this down. Then only you can understand this memory magnetic things. Take it down quickly. Okay, we'll uh, see. In memory, computer computer can understand ones and zeros. We uh, discussed the very first time ones and zeros, right? So this one or zero stored inside the can be either one or zero. It is stored inside the bit. One or zero stored inside the bit, right? Now suppose in our memory, this is my memory. This is the basic things you, you have to understand. Now my memory is divided to four parts. My memory is divided to four parts. So here, zero place. This is the one, this is the one, this is three. So these are the places I have given. In memory, we are giving starting from zero. So zero, one, two, three. I have four portions, four portions in my memory, and I have named them zero, one, two, three. Right? Then when you take the address in, when you take the address in, I told everything is in bit, bit. So if we have only one bit, I can have either zero or one as the value, zero or one as the value. So that means I can have only two values. If I have one bit, I can have only two values that can be represented as zero or one. If I 
convert it to decimal. Don't worry about this uh, conversion. We will be discussing the conversion in unit 3. So we are telling this is 0, this is 1. Same, same thing in decimal numbers. Normal numbers also we can tell 0 and 1. Right? Now, uh, is it enough to address this memory? Now this is like interactive. You have to talk. Most, all right? You can talk and give you ideas, expressions. Then only it will be success. Is it enough to address these things? Address other things. Address other things. Now, after the end, me wa apit mo apit ka odi ne addresses deka. E deka na apne access kaan mo na ani deke address apit ka odi. E deka na yaan na bear. Apni like to access these four addresses, I am taking. Two bits, bits they got that. So the bits they are coming to the end of the line, come the bits they come here at the end of the line. Zero, zero, kill at the end of the line. Zero, one, kill at the end of the line. One, zero, kill at the end of the line. One, one, kill at the end of the line. We have to remember the end of the line, maximum patterns. In a monkey, no, zero, zero, a kilometer and ten. Zero, one, a kilometer and ten. One, zero, yeah. One, one. Ah, now I can access my this memory by using this address. So how many bits I use? Two bits I use, right? So now I have four addresses. I can access the four memory location, right? Four memory location. So if we have one bit earlier, one bit two to the power one. This is number of bits. Number of bits. <coughs> I can access two addresses. If I have two bits, two to the power two, I can have four addresses. I can have four addresses. Now I need two bits to add access these four addresses. Now <coughs> in my I am telling. This is byte addressable. This is byte addressable. That means byte addressable means each address you can have only one byte. Each address you have a one byte. Then in my memory, I have four addresses. According to this one, each address is byte addressable means one byte is there in one address. So what is the capacity of my memory? What is that? Four bytes. Four bytes. Each address has one byte. So four addresses are there. Each four parts are there. So each part has one byte. So four bytes are there in my memory. So this four byte can be accessed by using my two bit address. Two bit address. So two to the power two. I can have four addresses. Each address you can have one byte. If it is byte address. If I tell here, kilobyte address. Kilobyte address. That means what? I have four portion in my memory. Each address have one kilobyte. Then I can tell this is four kilobyte in my memory. My memory size I can tell this is four kilobyte. Understood? So they have to in the questions or the scenario they have to give whether it's a byte addressable or kilobyte addressable. Then we have to find out how many addresses we need, how many bits we are using. If they are telling four bits, two bits, we can take definitely there are four addresses. So addresses part can be taken by two to the power number of bits. Right? So each address you have one byte or one kilobyte, then the four addresses I have four kilobytes. This is the basic thing that you have to understand, right? So uh, next week I am giving a small note 
about this part and we will do some calculations and uh, now uh, we can finish our lesson by next week and i thought of like the previous lesson we have we have uh, we did some questions related to past two questions related to unit one so same way unit two also you will be getting question paper um, online paper that same time same same time at the same time you have to finish that uh, so get ready go through all these um, things related to unit two and get ready for the questions so, so uh, next week we are going to do this calculation so don't miss the class i think uh, around the three students are missing today uh, dehini you can tell your friends to uh, don't miss this part this is a bit uh, hard when when it comes to the calculation uh, i will uh, put this video uh, like the early uh, that day which i uploaded to the youtube same thing i will be doing this video also so you can ask them to go through that and get ready for the uh, questions related to unit 2 okay then i uh, will uh, wind up for the day thank you